What's good y'all, your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're going to check out 10 fakest moments that exposed WWE. Now, there are situations where if you just look hard enough, you can see something that you know and you realize, wait a minute, there's some uh, trickery going on. Something's not right here. And I think a lot of us have seen that, yeah, especially when we were kids, we realized, hey, he, you know, wait a minute. They didn't really punch that person or wait a minute that person didn't really get hit that hard for them to sell so much like you realize it and a lot of times you know it comes down to whatever camera angle or if the wrestler's not hitting the move properly and you know sometimes you even see in certain situations if you guys remember when uh shane mcmahon got thrown off the hell in the cell and there was a crash pad like he hit the table and you the table there was like a bag under it you can tell like when the table exploded it was like a a bag under it that kind of softened the blow because when mankind fell off the hell in a cell or was thrown off the hell in a cell there was no crash pad under it there was no nothing to soften the blow he hit the table and then he hit the concrete ground there in that situation hit the table still at a high speed but there was a crash bag under it to kind of soften soften the blow which is understandable from that type of height and you know where he was on the on the cell so we're gonna check this out should be a, a good one appreciate all love support let's get right into this man fakest moments that expose wwe be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on facebook for exclusive lists number 10 wwe cameraman exposes all one of the top matches on the 2015 payback card saw john cena take on rusev the match would act as a blow-off to their feud and the two would wrestle in a brutal i quit match while cena and rusev did an excellent job in the match the same can't be said for the wwe cameraman who completely exposed one of the biggest spots in the match the spot in question saw cena perform yep. AA on rusev on the stage obviously but you could see there was a crash there was like a little pad there Obviously, this was done on a crash pad, and the idea behind the spot was that the cameraman wouldn't show that a crash pad was visible behind a section of the staging. In a reckless move, the cameraman shot the crash pad in clear view, so the secret behind the spot was yep. instantly exposed. This would have no doubt caused utter bedlam backstage, and Vince McMahon would have likely given the cameraman a stern telling off. Yeah, pretty nine, much. Bronson Reed's selling of nothing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <signature spots. laughs> He's run around the ring and tackle anyone in sight. When Strowman did this on Raw in June of 2024, Strowman set his eyes on Bronson Reed. This was funny. <laughs> Strowman to fail to make any contact with one of the W. Stick it. Ah. Oh, we we watched that live, bro. That shit was funny. He he didn't get hit at all. <laughs> WWE's biggest titans. While Strowman isn't supposed to pull all his weight into the tactical spot, he is supposed to make some contact, so the spot looks at least somewhat real. Unfortunately, this didn't happen, and Reed had to sell him. Oh! No contact whatsoever. Fans were quick to call out Reed for the body. Oh! Ultimately, fell to Strowman. In relation to Reed, he had no choice in the matter, as it would have been yeah. insanely awkward if Reed just oh! there no sold a spot. Number eight, <laughs> Linda McMahon tries to take a stunner. One of the worst stunners of all time, and it's not because of Stone Cold. It's just Linda didn't know how to take it properly. And Linda McMahon was never a trained performer, so whenever McMahon had to take part in any type of physical <laughs> it was often unintentionally hilarious. Yeah. When McMahon was booked to take a Stone Cold Stunner in 2005, McMahon's sell of the move was so unbelievably funny that even Austin himself couldn't help but smile. The infamous moment took place on the highly anticipated Raw Homecoming show as Austin delivered a trademark stunner to every single <laughs> yep. member of the McMahon family. Yep. And when it came to Linda McMahon, Austin was noticeably careful with how he handled her. Austin made virtually no contact with the move, and McMahon sold the move by falling into the canvas as if she'd just fallen off the count. <laughs> Chris Jericho misses. One of Chris Jericho's first feuds back following his return in 2007 was with JBL. The two embarked in a bitter blood feud, and they would have a pay per view showdown at the 2008 Royal Rumble. Their chemistry was awkward and flat, and a major contributing factor was that JBL had been on commentary for an extended period, so both men had a ton of ring rust. The ring rust came to surface when Jericho went for a bulldog on JBL and completely <laughs> JBL, JBL decided to sell as if Jericho had made contact. The pay-per-view match took place in front of a rapid Madison Square Garden crowd and of course, the fans ate the two alive. 
The two managed to continue as if nothing had happened, but it was likely a moment that the two former <laughs> world champions could easily forget. Number six, The Undertaker makes zero contact. And that's because of John Cena. I, we all know about this infamous match that was supposed to have some actual time to it, but Vince McMahon didn't want it to be that. He wanted it to be a squash match, essentially. And John didn't take it right. Like, he... he It's, it's like he... This one was more so on John because he, I don't think he, he didn't take the move correctly. When The Undertaker vs. John Cena was set for WrestleMania 34, fans were elated. The fact that there hadn't been a WrestleMania match yet was truly baffling and now fans expected a classic matchup that could redeem the dead man after a rather lackluster match the year prior. Yeah. The match itself ended up being a total squash and this is what anybody wanted. The no. disappointment extended to Undertaker himself who had trained for a featured matchup but it was Vince McMahon who believed that the match should have been an outright squash. Outside of the length of the match, one of the talking points of the match itself was a huge botch from both men. The botch occurred when The Undertaker went for a big boot and it clearly missed Cena by a good mile. Because Cena starts falling before it even connects. He puts his hands up and he starts falling instead of waiting, I'm guessing, for The Undertaker boot to hit his hand and then fall. Because when you look at it, just look at it from here. It looks like The Undertaker, the get, the Undertaker gets the leg up high enough. For a big boot and Right here, he's falling instead of waiting for it to hit his hands first and then fall. I remember watching this live like, bro, he just started falling before The Undertaker even contacted him. And it clearly missed Cena by a good mile. Cena obviously sold a move and the match continued on. But due to the quick pacing of the match, both men likely hoped that nobody noticed. But sadly, it was far too obvious to ignore. Number five, the Black Mass Botch. I think I remember this. I think I remember this. Developmental brand. The in-ring product has sometimes actually overshadowed anything on the main roster. This is mainly thanks to WWE signing top independent talent for the roster and having them mix it up with the young upcoming stars that WWE have manufactured in the Performance Center. The idea behind the feud between NXT champion Alistair Black and Lars Sullivan was to put Sullivan in there with a seasoned pro and hopefully elevate him to the next level. The two would face off at NXT TakeOver Chicago 2, and for the most part, Lars did a great job in the match. Unfortunately, towards the end of the match, the title showdown seemed to fall apart. Black went for his trademark finisher, the Black Mass, and it completely missed, but Lars, for some reason, sold it anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Back was turned when he hit the kick. And then he realized it instead of him, like maybe they pull some type of audible or something. He just says, ah, <laughs> he just falls. Just fuck it. I wouldn't be drastic to say that this one botch ruined the entire matchup as it drew all attention away from the positives of the match as all anyone could focus on was the major botch. Ah! Yeah, Big Show <laughs> takes an RKO. The RKO is arguably one of the most famous finishing moves of all time, and one of the great things about the popular move is that it's incredibly easy for wrestlers to take it. Yeah. The move requires a simple front face bump, meaning that Orton can perform the move on anyone with ease. However, one RKO that Orton no doubt wishes to erase from his memory took place during a match against Big Show on the February 13th, 2012 edition of Raw. In the match between the two wrestling greats, Orton went for an RKO on Big Show, and just as Orton was about to get a hold of Show's head to deliver the move, Show took the bump for the move prematurely. <laughs> it was an awkward visual, but Big Show always prides himself on delivering a stage. Oh, performance, man. Probably beating himself up backstage. Oh. Number three, Natalia pulls her hand away. The heart tag is one of the most exciting parts of a tag team match, and for mm -hmm. it to work, all wrestlers in the match must have their wits about them and must ensure that they time their plan spot correctly. When Natalia teamed with Charlotte Flair to take on the Kabuki Warriors on Raw in 2019, Natalia had no choice but to go off script due to Kyrie Sane missing a cue. Due to Sane missing a cue, Natalia had no choice but to retract her hand backwards whilst waiting for a tag from Flair, and this was so blatantly obvious uh... to the viewer. In defense of Natalia, she had little choice. If Natalia had tagged in, the entire hope spot that was scripted for the match would have been messed up, so it probably was in her best interest to act in the manner that she did. Oh. With that being said, it would have been much better if the camera didn't show her retracting a hand in clear view. Yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those type of things. I think they should have cut to a different angle because that angle shows her moving back. Maybe cut to a different angle. This is where you people in the in the production truck kind of gotta be on it. It's you know it's difficult to do live, but 
yeah, she if she would have, they would have cut to a different angle, it wouldn't have looked that bad. Number two, The Undertaker is seen shoveling. The Buried Alive match between The Undertaker and Vince McMahon in 2003 was designed to write the American badass off television. The dead man was going to spend a considerable amount of time off TV, and this would allow him to rest, heal nagging injuries, and grow his hair out ahead of the return of his dead man persona. The match between The Undertaker and McMahon was a one sided affair, but that was until the dead yeah. Kane interfered. Kane would assist McMahon and would allow McMahon to upset The Undertaker in one of the most I shocking moments this. of the Ruthless Aggression Era. Whilst all three men played their part well, WWE's production team failed in their role to hide the secrets of the Buried Alive match type. Towards the end of the match, it was clear thanks to WWE literally showing it on screen that The Undertaker was using a shovel in the grave to access the trap door. <laughs> the grave and this time The Undertaker was selling, but the shovel had mysteriously gone missing. This completely exposed one of WWE's most well-known gimmick matches, and it was all down to incompetent camera work. <laughs> one whisper in the wind. Literally, oh my God! Uh, this this is a classic one, bro. Oh my God! Such a classic one. <laughs> <laughs> Rumble pay-per-view, which took place in Saudi Arabia, featured a botch that made WWE look like a cheap independent show. In a lackluster US title match featuring champion Jeff Hardy and Jinder Mahal, Hardy went for the whisper in the wind, but sadly the move didn't connect at all. Hardy landed about two feet away from Mahal. The botch was made even worse by the fact that Mahal decided to take a comedic bump and sell the move despite the move clearly not even connecting. It was abysmal work from Mahal and in a moment of sheer panic, Hardy decided the best thing to do in the moment was to attempt a cover, which was probably the most sensible course of action. But there you have it folks, 10 of the fakest- don't end the gender, right? <laughs> this nigga really just sat there, saw him, was out of position. So instead of using that as a, like, oh, damn, he missed it. No. He still failed. Hardy's already on the mat. And he failed afterwards. Oh, my God. Don't hinder Jenner, right? Anywho, this was hilarious, man. It's just one of those things, like I said at the beginning of the video, when we were kids watching, growing up, you we definitely saw some things where you're like, wait a minute, that didn't look right. And then that's when you kind of catch on to how wrestling actually works on, on television. So, But hey, comment down below. Let me know some other moments where you just knew, like, okay, what is this? This don't look this don't look real at all like what what the hell is this like comment down below let me know what was the moment you remembered where you was like all right now you like okay all right <laughs> you rolled your eyes as soon as you saw it you know it, it kind of took you out the match just a little bit or the segment whatever it was but i appreciate all the love support road to 150k and i'm still young speed to youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace